So, let us define in a sequence a 0 to be 1 okay, and a 2 uh, a 0 to be 1 a 1 to be equal to 2 inductively for n bigger than or equal to 2. So, what is a n is half of a n minus 1 plus 2 by a n minus 1. You will wonder from where this equation is coming. Uh, I do not know whether you will have a course in where you will have uh, Newton Raphson method of finding zeros of uh, a function. So, it comes from there actually. So, this is a new Newton method of doing it things. Okay. So, anyway probably in the calculus if we do something of that type we will probably indicate. So, the claim is that this sequence a n is convergent, this sequence a n is convergent is a sequence of real numbers right. Claim it is convergent and a n square converges to 2 that is what we will show right. Now, look if we are able to prove this each a n is a rational number right. What you are doing you are adding dividing multiplying rational numbers only a 1 is rational a n s all are rational numbers. Is that okay? All a n s are rational? Yes, by the property that rationals form a field. You can add, multiply, divide rationals and not 0. So, a n is a sequence of rational numbers such that a n square converges to 2. So, where will a n converge? It will converge to a number which is not a rational number. So, this is a Cauchy sequence of rational numbers which does not converge to a rational number. It converges to a what we now call as irrational number namely square root of 2. Right? So, the proof is not very difficult we prove it by induction. So, the idea is that uh, try to show that this is a monotonically increasing or decreasing you can try to show it yourself if you want you can note it down or when I say give you the slides try to prove that this here is the application of that every monotonically increasing or decreasing sequence which is bounded above or bounded below must converge. So, using that property one shows that this sequence a n must converge. If this sequence a n converge what will be the limit? Can you guess the limit from here from this formula? A n converges right. So, L the limit must be equal to half of L plus 2 by L that gives you a quadratic in L and that says right is a quadratic L must be equal to square root of 2. Okay. So, that is the idea of the proof. So, uh, try to do it yourself I would not ask you in the exam or such things, but it is nice to have a sequence which is rationals which is monotonically increasing bounded and hence convergent, but the limit is not a rational number. Okay? So, that you can think as the need for uh, constructing real numbers. Okay? So, let us uh, right. Now, next thing that I want to do is I want to talk about some subsets of real numbers. So, we have got the set R which is a complete ordered field various ways of analyzing convergence of sequences right. And geometrically this is uh, let us assume we have got this uh, one to one correspondence that real line can be realized geometrically as set of all points on the line. Okay. Every point represents a number if a point two points x and y, y is on the right side of x then it is bigger that is the order. Right. As you go from left to right your numbers are increasing and these are the milestones 0, 1, 2 and so on fine. 
Let us look at a subset A of real line with the property such that if x and y belong to A, let us say x is less than y, right? Then z belongs to A for every x less than y less than z. We are looking at those subsets of real line which have the property. If there are two points x and y in A, then either x will be less than y or y will be less than x, right? Then look at all points z which are in between x and y. They should also belong to that set. So, A is a set with that property. So, such a set, right, such a set is called, what should we call it? It is like a new baby being born in our class, in the mathematics class. We want to nom give a name and in mathematics names are given which signify the property of that object. So, let us look at geometrically, here is x, here is y. Right? If these two points are in A, then everything in between must be. If this is another point which is inside A, then the whole of this must be inside it, right? So it looks like it is a part of the line, it is a segment of the line, so it is a interval of the line. So we call such a set, subset as interval, it is called an interval is called as an interval in R. Okay, x is less than y, na? x is less than y. What? Oh, okay, this one for every z less than y. So, let me write correct it. So, you are right, I, this is what I had in mind. Then for every x less than z less than y, Right, this z must belong. Anything that is in between, caught in between two elements of the set, all must be inside the set. Right? That means there should not be any gap. It should be a continuous of points. So such a thing is called an interval. So let us uh, declare call empty set an interval. If you like, you can call empty set an interval or empty set by definition is an interval because to check a set is interval, what do we have to check? If there are two points, but a set has no points, so vacuously our statement is true, right? This is what is said, vacuously our statement is true. So, or if you do not like such kind of arguments, you can say, let us declare empty set to be a interval. Okay. Right. Now, A, let us assume it is not empty and A is a subset of R, A interval. I am trying to now visualize what an interval should be. So, it is a set which is not empty and it is an interval. Right. So, A must have LUB property if A is bounded. Right? Every LUB property says what? Every non empty subset which is bounded above will have least upper bound. If it is bounded below, it will have greatest lower bound. So, possibilities first possibility A is bounded above. Right? If A is bounded above, then what must happen? Implies LUB of a call it as alpha exists, right? LUB of A, namely alpha exists. Now, what about below? It may be bounded below, it may not be bounded below. So, let us look at one sub case A is also bounded below. Suppose it is also bounded below, other possibility will be 
A is not bounded below. Sub cases. If it is bounded below, then greatest lower bound of A, call it as beta, exists. Right? It is not bounded below. That means given anything, I can find something smaller. It goes on. Right? Now. Another possibility comes. This alpha, which is the least upper bound, may belong to the set, may not belong to the set. So alpha belongs to A, or alpha does not belong to A. Similarly, this beta may belong to A, or beta does not belong to A. So the case is alpha does not belong to A. Beta does not belong to A. Let us analyze that case. So here is alpha, here is beta, right? Both of them don't belong. Is it okay? Then, what portion of the line is A? Anything that is bigger than alpha that is in A, because alpha is the greatest lower bound. Anything which is smaller than beta also is in A, so it looks like it should be this part. It looks like this should be this part of the line. So, so we write alpha comma beta. So we write A equal to alpha comma beta. Is it okay the notation now? Because anything bigger than alpha. Is going to be in A because alpha is the greatest lower bound, and beta is the least upper bound. So anything smaller has to be inside A, right? So this must this portion of the line must look like the set A. So this is what is called the open interval. So a interval we call it as an open interval. So what does it look like? So this, as I said, is all x belonging to R such that alpha less than x less than beta, right? Is that okay? So other possibilities now. I think you can try to write it yourself. If alpha belongs to A, if alpha belongs to A, but beta does not belong, right? That is another possibility. So then you will write A equal to alpha belongs and beta does not. So that is equal to x belonging to R. Say so that alpha less than or equal to x less than beta. Right? Similarly, you will have all other possibilities. This is for the bounded ones. If it is not bounded above, so let us look at the case. The set is bound. So just for the sake of one. A is not bounded above. A is bounded below. And bounded below, what we was a name, given name something anyway doesn't matter. If it is bounded below above alpha below beta, bounded below by beta. Beta is equal to greatest lower bound of A. Then what should A be signified as? Depending on whether beta is part of A or not. So let us say beta belongs to A. A that is also given. Say. Then it should start at beta. Right? Anything bigger than beta is part of A, and it is not bounded above. So everything bigger than beta is part of. A, right? So we should write it as something which goes on, and that is denoted by this symbol called plus infinity. Okay. So this is so it is like here is beta, and you look at all something that is going on, that kind of a thing, right? If you like, so you generate all kind of. Intervals that 
you have been probably familiar with right when there is a square bracket that means that is a part of the interval when it is open that means it is not part of the interval right so you will have both sides so that is called a closed end point inside that we said that side is closed right alpha belongs alpha is greatest over bound so square bracket will come we will say a is closed on the left open on the right right in words if you want to say that but keep in mind this this uh, thing is not a number so i think caution i should write because caution plus infinity is not a number it is only a symbol to indicate that you are not stopping anywhere on the right side similarly you will have something like say minus infinity to a so that will indicate it is all real numbers which are strictly less than a and a is not a part of that interval right so this is same as all x belonging to r say so that x less than a can we include plus infinity and minus infinity as part of the number system you understand what i am saying we have got set of real numbers we want to introduce two more elements in the number system real numbers call them as minus infinity and plus infinity but if we want to introduce two new symbols in that we should tell how are they going to behave with respect to addition how are they going to behave with respect to multiplication how are they going to behave with respect to the order structure on the set of real numbers because already there is a order there is a structure on real numbers addition multiplication and order if two new elements are thrown in they should be better be informed how will you interact with addition how will you interact with multiplication how will you interact with order right otherwise the system may become unstable it's like in a house some people are already staying and they have some rules and regulations of the house we will not do this we will do this we will sleep at this time wake up at this time and so on and two new guests come right so you would like to inform the guests that apni chappal bahar utar ke aana ghar mein nahi lana right hum 8 baje khana kha lete hain so that your house is not disturbed same way real number system has got some structure some properties when you add two new elements you have to specify the rules and regulations how will they behave with respect to those structures this is called extended real numbers so let me stop here saying that you one can do that but one has to specify the rules and regulations okay so let us stop that